Hey, welcome back to The Hand Toolery. I'm Andrew Malacy. Today we're going to be making a picture frame for a play poster that, uh, that I have. I was in a play a couple years back in grad school and I'm really proud of that. I had a really tiny part, but still it was a fun time and I remember it well. So uh, I'm going to use some scraps. And just real quick, if I'm not going to get into a whole lot of talking here. I've got these scraps that are kind of like sapwood of uh, walnut with, you know, nice um, dark uh, heartwood walnut. Then some here, it's kind of like half and half. Then this one, the same thing, it's kind of half and half. Then this one's all the way, walnut. And so what I'm going to do is uh, instead of routing or rabbiting in a, a groove, I'm just going to rip off the, uh, I'm going to rip off the sapwood here and then use this little strip and glue it onto these pieces here. So I'll try and leave the most, you know, the nicest wood exposed. So I'll just leave this one basically the way it is. And then what I'll do is also, I will, uh, I'll cut it up into the four pieces. I need a total of 62 inches of length because I need it to be 12.5 by 18.5. And then I need that twice. But if, as, so what I found that, so what I'm going to do is if I add 12.5 plus or 12 and a half plus 18 and a half, that's 31 inches. And these are just, these are just the 33, each of them just over. So that'll give me enough room. That'll give me enough room to, uh, you know, just move in a little bit on the edges. And, uh, you know, like this one has a little gap in the end. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to get rid of that gap and yeah, that should be, that should be more than enough. I'm going to use the bandsaw, you know, to, uh, to make this cutting down real quick. And then I'll just clean up everything. And it's really only going to be two pieces that I glue up. And then from there, it's just a lot of uh, just mitering the corners. So, all right. Thanks for watching. After I've established the 45 on one end, now I'm going to just mark 17 inches and then, or whatever I need 
So you, it's 11 by 17. So from the inside of the, uh, the inside edge right here, the inside edge right here is what I need to mark 11 or 17 from. So I'm gonna start with 11. I'm gonna make it a little generous. So I'm gonna make it just slightly over 11. 11 and an eighth. And keep in mind that your miters have to always be long on the outside edge. So you put it here. Since I marked 11 on the inside edge, it's got a sort of that, that diagonal line right here has to cross just on the waist side. So it's got to cross on this side right here. Okay, that's our 11 inch piece done. We're gonna use that for our, our, to measure the length on the other one. So we'll just put that off to the side. Now we're gonna come back and we're gonna cut off a, another angle on this side. So I'm gonna clamp it. Try not to remove too much because you wanna have it look continuous grain. Doesn't how, it doesn't really matter how much you take off. You just want it to be a minimal amount. Again, because you want it to kind of look continuous. Another thing on these miter boxes you want to watch out for, I should, is build up. Yep. Because that'll throw, that'll skew you there. So you gotta be careful. Not a bad cut. You can see by how even the line is, how plumb or out of out of plumb it is. It's not bad. Now we're gonna measure 17 from the again from the inside edge right there, where the picture will be housed. Where the poster will be housed actually. Transfer that down. Outside miter again. All right, nice little off cut there. And now it's not gonna be perfect because we gotta chew them up and everything, but we should be able to just connect them, you know, something like that. So all I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put these back to back like that. Make sure they're even. And just mark the outermost edge because it's not perfect, right? So mark the outermost edge. And that line there is the farthest point, right? That So whenever I cut it, we gotta leave that on the tip of it and on the inside of the waist, on, on what we're keeping, not the waist side. If I just gonna set my saw, if I can still see my line, the tip of it, the outside points, yeah, I'm good. Okay, so just more sewing. Wow, that sapwood is so much softer. It's nuts. Okay. There's that. Got to trim the corner on this one, remember? And the same thing with this one. Gonna line it up. Right there. So that is what we're keeping on the outside edge. And that's good. And now you can see we've got two pieces of continuous grain there. And those will be our 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 corners. And 
The only problem then we have is the other two end pieces, these end ones right here, they all have to line up, but we'll, we'll tweak it. We'll use the shooting board. So here's my shooting board and I've got a miter fence attachment here. So I'm gonna just, these go down a little bit. I still like to check it. That's, man, that's close. Okay. And I also have this little tiny piece that for larger uh, work pieces that I can have, and that's gonna be today. This one's actually much less critical. So it's slightly, ever so slightly set back from the top edge. It's just to support the work piece on right here. What's giving us the angle is this, at least in my design. All right. So it looks good. We're gonna take a straight edge across here. That's pretty close. Okay, now I'm gonna clean up the other side. Yeah, it's a little large, but... So you can always just Take that off the shooting board. I think I'm gonna leave it feeling lazy. All right, so now I'm gonna work these two pieces until they're exactly the same length because that's what's gonna determine square. I'm gonna just flip these two over and feel how long they are. It's pretty close. Now this. Okay, and the same thing. We're gonna put them together and get them even. Very little needs to be done. Okay, and now comes the first test fits. Everything should be fairly close. Okay, so give me that. I'll go like that. Just line up the. Okay. Then I want. Or I can make it the bottom. Or the, it doesn't matter. Okay. So here's that. Just line everything up. Those line up well. Oh, surprisingly, those are okay. This one is, yeah, this one's a little bad. Well, okay, it's fixable. It's just have to remove some material there because it's, uh, the piece is too thick. There it is. Okay, I gotta remove piece, pieces here and here, some material. Okay, so I took a couple shavings off here and here, and that did it. it, that did it. It's like three shavings or two off each one. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna work on just getting it glued up, and I'm gonna do a quick test fit, before, actually before that, I'm gonna do a quick test fit of the poster itself, just to see how close it lines up. If it lines up, since these are glued on, if it gets close within this little frame here, I'm okay with that. Okay, okay so here's the poster. I'm gonna get everything close. Oh, it'll fit just inside there. Let me see down at the bottom here. Came apart a tiny bit, but it's gonna fit now on the side. A little long even, but it'll get covered. Yeah, perfect. This is gonna work, so it's the right size. All right, now comes glue up. So I've got some string here, some cordage. See that? 
I'm gonna use this to do the glue up. If you have corner clamps, those would be good. One thing about this is, although it's end grain to end grain, the glue does hold well, although it's definitely not the strongest bond. So that's why a lot of people put like splines in theirs, but I actually don't because it's hard on hand tools. And uh, as long as people aren't abusing it, I haven't had one fail yet, but that's only a couple years, you know, so I'm not worried about it right now. You can always shoot a couple pin nails in the corner, I guess, too. For me, the most important, the critical joints are these ones at the top that are seen. I'll always go ahead and fudge the bottom corners if I have to. So yeah, let's just start with these. So I've got a little loop here. I'm just gonna pull it through the loop. That'll get me started. Okay, so check this out. You just put tension on it like that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure everything's straightened up here and flush and looking good and leave it. Okay, so I've tied it off. I've inserted some wedges to put a little extra pressure. I've got a square in the corner. It's pretty close to square. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Here it is a couple hours later. And it turned out pretty well, pretty square. The poster fits nicely. And um, there was a little bit of gappiness. So I just filled it with the old trick of sawdust and glue, like there and there. So it's all good. In fact, I filled every corner if I could. And then I flushed up this corner a little bit. It was a little off, but really that's it. And I want to get a nice um, even finish on, on these areas that aren't so even. So I'm just going to go ahead and sand it down. And it does pain me at times, but there is some tear out that I just couldn't get without taking it. There's some tear out right there that I couldn't get without really taking it down with the plane because I was careless. So I'm just going to sand it out. So that's what you're going to see me do right now. One reason why you want to use a long sand, uh, sanding stick is because you won't round it over. So I've always got half the reference surface being sanded at the time while half of it is off. So that does help. That helps quite a bit in terms of keeping everything crisp. All right, I finished sanding with my 220 grits and I'm actually gonna go all the way up to 500 now. And this just sort of evens things out a little bit more, fills in the pores a tiny little bit, which I like. You'd be surprised, it really makes a difference. I love finishing with 500 grit. There's that, I am really pleased with it. The texture on this outside is just amazing. I love it. I'm gonna do the same thing on this top ledge here and to a lesser degree on the inner ledge, just try and make it look good and nothing really on the inside. Okay, I've got everything glued up and sanded up to 500 grits on all the surfaces that actually matter. And uh, I think I'm ready to go. So I just use a wipe on poly with a ripped up t-shirt. And uh, just start by pouring some on. Look at that. This is why we love walnut, am I right? 
Wow. Okay, one coat, and in a little while, I will come back and put another coat. Okay, so here's the frame, it's upside down. This is the top right here, so I'm actually gonna do it like this. I've got myself a piece of glass. We've got a piece of glass right here. It's like $7. And then this is just a UPS box. I just cut off, cut the size here, and I drop right in like that. First will come the glass. So as you can see, the glass should just fit just like that. Oof, I was nervous about that. So you're gonna go glass, then the poster, then this, and then backing. All right, it's not perfect, but it's close. So I'm gonna put it in here and just clean the back of it in place now. Now for the poster, it's just gonna go in like that. Great. And I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put this cardboard side down because I don't want any difference in color showing through. All right, now we're gonna take our first look at it like this. Looks good, looks really good. Yeah, just gotta do a little cleaning on the front side, but I'm satisfied with that, okay. Cool, so now I have to make a fitting for this uh, back cover. And uh, I'll use this, but actually before I do that, I've gotta do two things. I've gotta secure this all in place and then make the back cover with this paper. So I'm using these things called glazer points and they're okay. I don't think they're meant to do this, but I, that's what I have. I think you can use little brad nails or staples or like the little pins that go in there. But um, I'm just using this little, this little tool here to push them in. They look like this. So these, these have worked for me in the past, but yeah, like I said, they're not the best. Yeah, that's good. All right, so I think I'll be able to mount these in. The thing I do like about these is that I'm pushing them in and against my hand, I'm not stressing the frame. So I like that. I'm gonna do a few more of these. I'm gonna basically do one, two, and then three on each side. So two, four, 10 total. So can you see them all right here? One, two, and three, three, and two. They went in quite well. Any of the walnuts, the heartwood of the walnut here, it was a little tough to put in, but anywhere there's sapwood, it just went in like butter. What I would say then is these are a viable option. I'm not sure if that's what they're for, used for. I think like it says for glazing, so I think it's for windows, but they seem to work fine on the so softer woods. So. I'm not sure if you'd want to use these for a really, really hard wood, but 
I think one, it's your limit here, but it held everything securely in place with really minimal effect. I didn't want there to be any risk of anything coming through. I didn't want to staple, for example. And yeah, this was great. I love this option. Next, what I'm gonna do is, this is how I close my picture frames. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of whatever, it, it's okay. But um, what I'm gonna do is put a, a, a thing of double-sided tape all the way around and then just fold it on itself. And then I will put the back over it and then just cut it off. So you see what I'm doing? I've got a line of tape right there. And then I just fold it back on itself. And what that does, in my opinion, is it gives us like a little bit of an air pocket so that way the uh, there's like some give to the, uh, almost like a bead of glue, you know? Make sure you're not leaving any overhang on the tape because it will be a bear to cut off with a knife. Here's the, here's the paper I've got, just a roll of paper. For me, the hardest part is getting this on flat. So. Then you wanna make sure you pull it tight so you can get some of that out. Well, I didn't get all the wrinkles out, but that's that. It. And now we're just going to use a utility knife to cut off the excess. Okay. Last thing is we're gonna need some hardware up the top there and a name card. Mark the holes. Got my marks. Last thing left is the little name tag, which I will also attach with some of this, I think I'll attach it like right there. I'm very happy with how that turned out. There's that. And one last time, I'm gonna wipe it down.